all of us develop our own routines for bathing and caring for our bodies early in life. We take these personal care routines for granted unless they are disrupted by illness or disability. Receiving care from another person may bring up a variety of feelings. When a husband provides care to his wife, or a daughter provides personal care to her father, feelings of shame, embarrassment, anger, or depression may occur. Even when the person providing care is a hired caregiver, the experience of physical exposure can trigger difficult emotions. Hello, I'm Marion Karpinski, and I'll be your host during this program. We will examine why personal care is important and how you can provide it safely and considerately. Caring for someone at home requires flexibility and problem solving. It isn't necessary to imitate a hospital setting. With a few simple home modifications, you can make caregiving easier and safer. For instance, the bedroom is not always the best place for an extended illness or recuperation. The person being cared for may feel isolated and miss the day-to-day -day activities of the household. Some people like to have a lot of activity around. Some people like the teenagers and the grandkids uh, running around if you're caring for an elderly person or a grandparent. Um, so again, you just have to talk to the, the family and the setting and, and say what is going to work best for you. Different considerations when you're in a living area or a living room area is that there's more light. There's more um, oh, things to look at. Some individuals like to see their birds outside the living room window. Some like to have the availability of their animals running in and out and, and the accessibility of, of um, the, the social environment that that brings to them by having it in a op more open space. Some things to think about when changing the location of care are whether windows or doors are drafty or too sunny, and if there are adequate electric outlets and room for necessary supplies. If the bathroom is too far to walk, a bedside commode may be more convenient. An electric or mechanical bed with adjustable heights and positions helps to make the work easier on your back. Social activity is important for everyone. If the person visited with a friend each week, Try to arrange for the visits to continue. Think for a minute about this person's world. You are coming into that person's world. That's all they have. Their, their world is confined to that small room. How can you make that world brighter for them, uh, more exciting, um, entertaining? Can you bring music to that person's world? Can you bring lightness by opening curtains? Can you bring visitors in? Can you invite people in that haven't been in for a while? How do you bring, um, how do you embellish and um, bring a different quality to that person's world? Because they don't have the ability to do that anymore. For your own safety, it is important to move your body correctly when lifting or moving people or objects. Before you lift, Create a solid base with your feet apart and flat on the floor. Use the strong muscles of your thighs rather than your back when lifting. Keep the object close to your body. Don't twist, but pivot by turning your feet. Whenever you can, slide, roll, or push the object instead of lifting. The goal of infection control is to limit the spread of germs that can cause illness. Direct contact is one way that germs are spread. Any time you touch someone who is sick, or whenever you handle another person's body fluid, such as sputum, urine, stool, or blood, you are in direct contact. Germs are also spread indirectly through contact with clothing, bed linens, dressings, or objects used by an infected person. Proper hand washing is the single most effective way to prevent the spread of germs. Always wash your hands thoroughly before and after giving care. Keep your nails short. Avoid wearing artificial nails that can harbor fungus and are a potential source of infection. To wash your hands properly, begin by running the water and adjusting it to a comfortable temperature. Apply soap and work up a good lather. Begin washing from above the wrists to the fingertips. Friction helps to mechanically remove germs from the hands. Produce friction by using rotating and rubbing motions. Be thorough, rubbing all surfaces, including your palms, between your fingers, your thumbs, and fingertips. Move rings up so you can wash the area underneath. 
Vigorously wash for at least 15 seconds. Use a nail brush or orange stick to clean beneath your fingernails. Rinse thoroughly by holding your hands downward and rinse above the wrist to the fingertips. Use clean paper towels for drying and another to turn off the faucet. If water is not available or if time is a factor, the use of an alcohol-based hand rub is recommended. Apply the solution to the palm of one hand and rub all surfaces of both hands until your hands are dry. Gloves are used as a protective barrier against germs. Wear gloves when handling any body fluid and when touching surfaces or equipment that may have been contaminated with body fluid. To remove gloves, begin by placing the fingers of your right hand under the left wrist cuff on the outside of the glove. Pull the glove downward until it is off. The left glove is now inside out and held in your right hand. To remove the right hand glove, place your thumb or fingers into the inside cuff of the right glove. Pull the right glove down inside out. The right glove now contains the left glove inside it. Dispose of the gloves in a lined trash container. Wearing gloves does not eliminate the need for hand washing. Fluids can leak in at the cuff, a glove can have a hole in it, or it could be punctured during use. Always wash your hands before and after wearing gloves. Another important factor when providing personal care is respect for the individual's privacy. A closed door or room screen, a lowered window shade, use of a towel or light blanket for covering are simple measures that help to protect a person's privacy. Privacy also includes protecting the details of a person's life and condition. Discuss essential information only with those who need to know in order to provide care. Protecting privacy shows respect for that person's human dignity. Another way to show respect is to honor the individual's preferences. The best way to address what's important to the person you're giving care to is to ask them. Uh, honor what their preferences are by asking them, how would you like this done? Would you like music played? Would you like uh, this to be turned lower? Would you like me to open the door as I leave or leave it, you know, leave it closed? How would you like things to be? In and around their environment, uh, when a person is bed confined or, or confined to a room, they've lost a lot of choices. And so we need to bring back choices to them. And what I like to tell caregivers is don't make assumptions. Don't think that what you like is what they're going to like. So give them a lot of room for choices that will honor them. The third aspect of personal care is to promote independence. It may be easier, more efficient, or seem more loving to do things for the other person, but it is better psychologically and physically for the individual to do as much self-care as possible. You may need to deliberately slow your pace in order to create opportunities for self-care. Oral hygiene is cleaning the teeth, gums, and tongue. Oral hygiene helps to prevent tooth decay, gum disease, and mouth odor. Mouth care is recommended in the morning, after meals, and at night. Whenever you begin to provide personal care to someone, always tell the person what you plan to do. To avoid the danger of choking, make sure the person is as upright as possible. Place a towel on the person's chest under the chin. Give him a sip of water to moisten the mouth. Apply toothpaste and wet the toothbrush with water. Carefully brush the top, back, and front sections of each tooth. Gently brush the tongue as well. When you are finished, have him rinse his mouth with water. Flossing helps to remove food particles between the teeth. A flossing device allows you to floss another person's teeth safely. Before providing denture care, wash your hands and apply gloves. Then place a towel across the chest and under the chin. If the person needs assistance to remove the dentures, grasp the upper denture between your thumb and index finger. Use a gentle up and down motion until the suction releases, then pull downward to remove the denture. The lower denture is grasped the same way, using a slight twisting motion to release the suction before lifting it out of the mouth. Always place them directly into the denture cup. Place a paper or cloth towel in the sink to prevent breakage. 
Dentures can shatter if they are dropped even a short distance. Rinse the dentures under cool water. Hot water can cause warping. With the dentures in the palm of your hand, apply toothpaste or denture paste and brush until all surfaces are clean. Then rinse thoroughly in cool water. Before replacing the dentures, clean the gums and tongue by using a soft brush or toothette. A toothette is a swab with a soft sponge on its tip. Look for any redness or sores that may be hidden by the dentures. After cleaning, rinse them out thoroughly. If a fixative product is used, follow the directions for its application. Moisten the dentures before replacing them. Grasp the front of the upper plate with your thumb and index finger. Raise the upper lip and slide the denture in, pressing it firmly upward into place. Repeat the process for the lower plate, pressing downward for a secure fit. Soak the dentures in a cleaning solution overnight. Follow the directions on the cleaning product's label. Dry mouth can result from certain medications or from mouth breathing. Sugarless hard candy, frequent sips of water, ice chips, and a moistened toothette are ways to relieve dryness. Bathing cleanses the skin by removing bacteria and decreasing body odor. Bathing stimulates circulation and helps to prevent skin breakdown. Bathing is more than a task. It's, it's an opportunity to actually work through a relationship with the person that you're caring for, if it's a family member or if it's a patient that you're providing a service for. And it really requires that you get to know the individual, both their likes and their dislikes, their rituals, that they have had rituals around bathing that make it much more enjoyable for them. So that it's something that they look forward to and it's not just something that's done to them and they don't have any controls over. A complete bed bath is usually given two to three times per week. Check with the doctor or nurse about how often to give a complete bath. Frequent bathing may not be advisable for some people. A partial bath, including face and hands, underarms, back and the genital area is often sufficient between complete baths. The genital area should be cleaned each time there is bowel or bladder incontinence or other discharge. The most comfortable water temperature for bathing is 105 degrees. Use a thermometer to check water temperature in order to avoid accidental chilling or scalding. If you plan to use body lotion, you can warm it by placing the bottle in the warm bath water. If you do not have a thermometer, check the water on your inner wrist to determine if the temperature is comfortable. Always ask the person whether deodorant and lotions are acceptable before applying them. People who are ill are more sensitive to fragrances. It is best to use only fragrance-free products. Check to be sure the room is warm and free from drafts. Before you begin the bath, gather all the supplies at the bedside. Then wash your hands and apply gloves. Raise the bed to a comfortable working height. Have the person lie close to the side of the bed that you will be working from. Remove the top bed covers. Use a light blanket or a large bath towel to cover the person's body. Then remove the top sheet. Work under the bath blanket as you remove the clothing. During the bath, use one basin for washing and another for rinsing. If you are using a no-rinse soap, you can eliminate the rinse basin. Just add a small amount of no-rinse soap to the water. In this demonstration, we will be using a mild non-deodorant soap and two basins. Change the water frequently, especially when it becomes too dirty, soapy, or cool. Use one cloth to wash and a different one to rinse. Use a new cloth if it becomes dirty. Wet and wring out the washcloth so that it is wet but not dripping. Form a mitt by wrapping it around your hand in thirds. Then fold the excess length down over your palm and tuck the end in. Another method is to fold the washcloth into a triangle. With the pointed end toward your wrist, wrap one end across the back of your fingers and secure it with your little finger. Then wrap the other end around the back of your fingers and secure it with your thumb. Always begin with the cleanest body areas and end with the most soiled.
Tell the person what you plan to do as you move from one part of the body to another. Begin to wipe the eyes from inner to outer corner using clean water only. Use a different part of the face cloth for the second eye. Wash the face with clear water or a cleansing lotion, moving from the center out to the ears and neck. Rinse the face if using a cleansing lotion. Then pat the skin dry. To wash the neck and behind the ears, apply a small amount of soap to the mitt and gently wash the area. Rinse and pat dry. Place a towel beneath the arm and hand to keep the bed dry. Even if the bed linens are changed after the bath, wet sheets may cause the person to chill. Support the arm at the elbow and wash from wrist to shoulder, a technique that promotes good circulation. Rinse and pat dry. Then wash the underarm area. Rinse and pat dry. To wash the hand, place it in a small basin of water and let it soak for a minute. Then wash the hand well, including areas between the fingers. After the hand is washed and dried, massage the hand with a small amount of lotion. Massage by using smooth, light strokes from the hand to the upper arm. For people with very thin, dry, fragile skin, avoid rubbing. It is best to pat the lotion on. To wash the chest, place a towel over the chest and pull the top covering down to the abdomen. Working under the towel, wash the chest. Carefully wash under the breasts. Moisture in that area can cause irritation and redness. Then rinse and dry the chest and breast area, including under the breast. Wash, rinse, and dry the abdomen. Pay particular attention to folds and creases where moisture and irritation may occur. Then replace the bath blanket over the upper body. Uncover the leg and place a towel underneath the leg to protect the bed. Bend the knee and support the leg beneath the knee as you wash from the ankle to upper thigh. Then rinse and pat the leg dry. Soak the foot in the basin before washing. Support the foot as you wash the foot in between the toes. Then dry well. Apply lotion to the top and bottom of the foot and heel and gently massage. Avoid lotion between the toes. Apply lotion to the leg by patting it on. Never massage the legs. People who are confined to bed have an increased risk of blood clots. Massaging the legs could cause a blood clot to dislodge. After washing the legs and feet, change the water in the basin before continuing with the bath. To wash the back, turn the person to her side away from you and spread a towel lengthwise along the back. Starting at the neck, use long strokes to wash the back and buttocks. Look for any skin changes such as flaking or dryness. Notice any rashes, redness, scratches, swelling, or any signs of irritation, particularly over bony areas. Report any skin changes to the doctor or nurse immediately. Then rinse the back and buttocks. When finished, pat the area dry. After washing the back, apply lotion to your hands. Then rub the back with both hands beginning at the lower back. Using long, soothing strokes, move up toward the shoulders. Then massage using a circular motion from the shoulders down to the lower back. Continue this pattern for three to five minutes, applying more lotion as needed. Never massage redden or irritated areas. These could indicate a pressure ulcer. At the end of the back rub, wipe away any excess lotion. Turning the person every two hours and bathing can help prevent pressure ulcers. With the person still lying on her side, move the towel to the buttocks and thigh area. Then turn her onto her back so that the towel is under the buttocks. Washing another person's genital and rectal area can produce anxiety and discomfort for the caregiver and the person receiving care. Being sensitive and respectful to the person's feelings can help reduce anxiety. Always encourage the person to do as much personal hygiene as possible. Some people will attempt to wash the genital area themselves, even though they are physically unable to do so. It is important to observe the person doing personal hygiene initially and from time to time 
to be sure that he or she is doing a good job. Begin with her knees bent and her legs slightly apart. Okay. And I'm going to give you a washcloth. I want you to use different sections of the washcloth with each wipe. There you are. Now let me help you. Good. Okay. If she is unable to wash herself, and you must clean the genital area, begin by telling the person what you plan to do. Use a slightly soapy washcloth or disposable wipe and gently wash from the front downwards toward the rectum. Avoid scrubbing motions. When you're washing the bottom, you're going to use different sides of your washcloth, changing it with each wipe. Or you can use a disposable towelette and using one towelette per wipe. After completely washing and rinsing the genital area, you want to use a dry, clean towel and gently pat the area dry. To wash a male's genitals, hold the penis with one hand and wash from the tip toward the base using a circular motion. For males who are uncircumcised, retract the foreskin to clean the head of the penis. With the man's legs slightly spread, gently wash and rinse the scrotum, then pat it dry. To wash the rectal area, start with the person lying on his or her side with the knees bent. Lift the upper buttock with one hand to expose the anal opening. With the other hand, gently wash the area with a soapy washcloth, washing from the genital area to the rectum. Then rinse with a fresh clean cloth and gently pat the area dry. After giving a bath, always dress the person in fresh clothing. To groom the hair, begin by placing a towel on the pillow. Some women with permed hair prefer to have their hair picked rather than brushed. Have her turn away from you so that you can work at the back of the head. If the hair is curly or tangled, begin at the ends of the hair and work in sections toward the scalp. To avoid pulling the hair, use one hand to hold the hair as you comb out the tangles. For some women, wearing makeup increases her sense of well-being. If she is unable to do it herself, offer to apply it for her. Bed linens should be changed after a complete bed bath or when soiled. The clothing, towels, and bed linens of a person with an infection or who is incontinent should be washed separately from the routine household laundry. Wash soiled laundry in hot water with a cup of chlorine bleach or Lysol added to the wash water. The best bed linens to use are made of natural fibers that are soft, lightweight, and washable. When you make the bed, keep in mind that the top covers can be heavy on a person's body. For some people, that weight is painful. Bed cradles help to keep the covers off the lower body. Another way to keep the covers off the lower body is to place a pillow against the bottom of the feet with the pillow sitting higher than the toes. Then the covers rest on the pillow rather than on the lower body. The top cover should never be tight across the feet. Tight covers can cause a shortening of the calf muscles, a condition that makes it difficult and painful for the person to stand. A night splint can help keep the calf muscles from tightening. To help prevent pressure ulcers on the heels of the feet, it is best to float the heels by placing a pillow from the knee to the ankle with the heels suspended off the bed. Heel protectors are also available. Whenever you leave the room after providing personal care, always be sure the person is warm, safe, comfortable, and has a way to call for help. A device that's commonly used in home care environments is a baby monitor. A device is plugged in at the bedside, the person could speak as, as low as a whisper, and the person can pick up way in the back room that that individual needs help. Uh, you can hear, if a person's unable to communicate with words, you could hear coughs, you could hear uh, someone gasping, you could, you could hear any number of sounds with a baby monitor. So it's a very good device uh, to use 
communicating one from to the other, so you don't need to stay right in that room with the individual. A bell, just a little school bell, would be another way. There's a wide range of supplies available to help you in providing care in the home. Uh, a good thing to do is take a trip to the corner drugstore and look at what supplies are available. Many of the supplies are uh, in and around the disposable product lines, disposable gloves, disposable incontinent pads that are simply a uh, plastic lined pad. They come in various different sizes and you can use them uh, under the bed, um, under the sheets before you, uh, well as you're making the bed, you would put one of them down to protect the mattress, then you would make the bed and you can put another one down between the individual and the bed, so if they soil that one spot, you don't have to completely change the whole linen. You can do a change of just that incontinent pad and you don't have to change the whole bed. It saves you a lot of time and a lot of laundering. Most people feel better when they change into daytime clothing rather than staying in pajamas. Getting dressed increases self-esteem and sets a rhythm for the day.